Wait a minute, are we not gonna talk about how sandwiches are kind of like big boy overpriced? The average sandwich costs this right here. But I think we can take that price to this per sandwich. That is but cheaper. down the sandwich, I'm looking at all these different elements, right? We all know bread is cheap, everybody knows that. But let's talk about the meat. So take turkey for example, right? You go get sliced turkey and you're paying a per pound price, which is astronomically higher than it should be. You're basically paying for the whole breast. So that's what we need to have as our plan of attack. The bread is cheap, you can make it cheaper by making it yourself and all the other elements, blah, 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 blah. We'll work our magic. Long story short, let's make this. Shall we? All right. So the first thing we're gonna break down is the most expensive part. Why buy expensive lunch meat when you could just, well, make it? First thing you'll need is some sort of a large container that can easily hold one gallon of water. Pour in, you guessed it, one gallon of cold water. To that water, you're gonna start whisking and adding three quarters of a cup or 216 grams of kosher salt, half a cup or 115 grams of brown sugar. Whisk all that until completely dissolved. Then optionally, you can add aromatics like one tablespoon or nine grams of uncrushed black peppercorns, two crumbled bay leaves, and three sprigs of fresh thyme that have also been lightly crushed. Optional, but you know. Flavor time. So that's your brine. Give it a sniff to find out that it really doesn't smell like anything right now. Next up, you're gonna need one large skin on turkey breast. Ideally, Bonus. mine was a little misshapen and I wanted it to look real nice for the B-roll, so I actually cut it down a little bit, but you don't have to do that at all. Gently submerge your bird into the brine and make sure it stays under the water or papa no quis. Cover it and let it brine in the fridge overnight. Now once your big breasted bird has rested, pull it out of the brine and pat it completely dry with paper towels. From there, you'll place it on a wire rack set over a baking sheet that has been lined with foil, unless you want burn stuff on the bottom that's really hard to clean off, whatever, it's up to you. Optionally, you can give it a light coating with vegetable oil and add additional seasoning if you desire, but that's not entirely necessary at all. A light sprinkle of salt would do just fine. Now take the bird, pop it into the oven, set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes or until it becomes a nice golden brown color and the interior reaches 163 degrees Fahrenheit. This thing is so big that the temperature will definitively coast to 165. Now just let it rest until it reaches room temperature, then wrap it in plastic wrap, nice and tight, and set it in the fridge until completely cold, at least three hours, but ideally overnight. I know it's a two day process, but look, now you have a massive amount of turkey lunch meat. Now all you need to do is slice it up. Obviously you could just use a sharp knife and slice it as thin as you want. And this is but cheaper, so I'm going to recommend that option. But I wanted to try this meat slicer that I got. And I gotta say, it kind of sucks, but it got the job done, so uh, whatever. But hold on a second. Let's look at this gorgeous slice of turkey. Unbelievably moist. Mm, moist turkey breasts. Papa geese. Beautiful and ready to be scrunched between two slices of bread. Now next up is our sando sauce. It's real simple. Get a medium sized bowl and add one third of a cup or 80 grams of mayonnaise, a quarter cup or 48 grams of Dijon or yellow mustard, a quarter cup or 20 grams of finely chopped parsley and two cloves of garlic that have been grated. Season that to taste with fresh ground black pepper and kosher salt. Mix all that together until thoroughly combined and that is your sandwich lube. Yes, it's basically sandwich lube, let's be honest. Okay, we're so close to this sandwich. Can't you just smell it? Sort of, kind of, probably not. We have one last sandwich component. I was thinking about adding sliced tomato, but that's lame. So let's do something a little more metal, brother. Let's sear these Now, get a large skillet and heat it with just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom, about three tablespoons or 45 grams. Heat that over medium high heat until shimmering and hot, hot potat. Then carefully add in one container, about half a pound of grape tomatoes. Now let those sear, blister, and char. They're gonna spit quite a bit as they sear because of all the bursting juice, so please be careful. After about three minutes, check them and they should have softened quite a bit and gotten some good char. If not, leave them in until they do. Then immediately remove, place to the side, and season to taste with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Okay, I actually wanna note one more thing. Let's talk about sliced onion on a sandwich. First off, thinly sliced onions are superior. And when I say thin, I mean as thin as you can get, nearly shaved. More importantly, I have a secret for you. After you've sliced your onions, place them in a bowl and top that bowl with a wire rack and run your tap so it fills up with water and overflows into your sink. Then just keep running that water and let it rinse for about 30 seconds. And this is going to help wash away a lot of the abrasive qualities of an onion. It keeps the onion mild enough to eat a lot of, but just a little bit of spice while maintaining that nice, fragrant, sweet onion. 
Yay, it's sandwich assembly time. Now, we need some sort of bread. This is up to you. Obviously, homemade bread is ultra cheap, but so is a lot of store-bought bread. Choose whatever you want. I'm not gonna judge you. Here, I'm using a nice, fresh-baked sourdough loaf. You'll need about eight slices for four servings. See, it's a basic mathematical equation. Optionally, you can toast your bread in a toaster or in a pan with butter until beautifully toasty golden brown. Then lay down your bread, and on both halves, spread on a generous amount of your mustard mayo. Next up, some lettuce. You can use iceberg or butter, followed by your seared tomatoes, your thinly sliced red onion, papas, juicy turkey breast, and optionally one to two slices of Swiss cheese, unless you get farty with cheese, I don't know. And finally, crown your king. I mean, look at this magnificent sandwich. Grand total price of this per sandwich. That's better than just about any sandwich shop you're gonna go to. Now let's slice this in half and check out the cross section. Oh, wow, yes. Papa really like you. Okay, let's just, let's taste test this. Okay, so we have our completed sandwich, and I gotta say, this sandwich looks luxury. I've waited for this. We might have topped Vikram and TJ's favorite sandwich just because of how simple this is. Because we've done much more complicated sandwiches. And this sandwich for the this price right here per sandwich is 175% pussy. I don't really want to say anything because it's really yummy. My entire crew is just standing here just watching me. Get in here. You have a little taste. Yo. Yep. The turkey breast feels like you're drinking water. It's just like really refreshing. It's on par with the focaccia sandwich. If anybody has eaten that or seen it, this is on par. For the, the price? Focaccia sandwich, especially for the price. You would go to a Jimmy John's and pay like $12 for this. And you get $12. one sandwich and it's done. We still have a load of turkey breast to slice. So this is a butt better and a butt cheaper. <laughs> The overarching word that I think we're all looking for for this sandwich is delicious, just as good as any other sandwich, and, and I repeat, moist. You wanna know what else is full of juicy breast sandwiches and sandwich lube? B-roll. And that is it. So we made our beautiful, perfect sandwich. I think if you saw this at any menu, anywhere, at any restaurant, I mean, I would pay $16 for it. I would do that. Would you, Vikram? He's like, no, I would not actually. <laughs> you can have a delicious sandwich if you just break down these elements and actually make them yourself. You can do it. Why are we paying so much money for a cold cut? Why? All right, I'm off my soapbox. Ah. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. People finally stopped complaining about the uh, cabinet opening and closing with this. They finally realized, oh, it's a different series. He's not in the cabinet for this one. Or, well, you're not. Shut up.